Fifa, what are you aiming for this season? What are your racing goals? Um, yes, the Classics is my first big goal. And I think yeah, the two big races are Flanders and Roubaix. And yeah, they're dream races of mine. And yeah, I had a good spring last year. And so we're really yeah, going full gas in and we'd love to win like a, another Classic that we did this year. Yeah, amazing. Um, v always the classics are sort of a bit of a a bit of a lottery, I suppose, because of the the conditions and those sort of things. But w apart from obviously being fit as you can be, what kind of stuff do you do to make sure you maximise your chances of success in a very uncertain race? Yeah, especially the race like Roubaix is complete uncertainty with crashes, punctures, whatever. But I think all you can do is control what you can and. Uh, the team really support me and um, we ha head into the races um, so they look after me all day and keep me out of the wind, keep me in position for the important sectors and then it's just going full gas at the right moment. Yeah, yeah so you just got to time your effort and hope yeah. it sticks, mm -hmm. yeah. And you, you, you mentioned there controlling the controllables. I'm guessing that hydration, nutrition, that's something that's relatively in your control. So how do you manage that in a race like, it's like Roubaix, for example? Yeah, in the classics like and all races, nutrition is so important. Um, we really focus on fueling and hydrating. Um, yeah, before the race and in the race, like at least 90 grams an hour of carbs. Um, and especially the classics when it's just so full gas, like one day from start to end, you have to be completely on top of it from the beginning because it's, yeah, the person that's not fueled right will just, that will kind of make the race at the end of it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And um, we obviously help the team with sweat testing and hydration specifically. Have you had your sweat test done for this season and uh, do you know your results? Yeah, I'm um, quite a salty sweater, so I take the 1,000 milligram tabs, um, which is, yeah, in the summer I'm completely white, <laughs> covered in my kit. So for me, it's really important to yeah be really sharp with my hydration. Yeah, you and me the same. I mean, I, I lose tons of salt yeah. in my sweat and I, I found out the hard way that was a bit of an Achilles heel. So how do you make sure that you're getting those extra salts in during the race? Because I know it can be a bit of a, a bum fight with all the different bottles and things like that. How do you actually manage that during the race itself? Yeah, so with our protocol in the team, we usually have um, one bottle with the 1,000 milligrams before the race, and then we have our isotonic drink in the race, and then we also have another bottle afterwards, so replenishing it, um, especially in a stage race, that's really important to yeah, not make sure you're depleted at any point. Definitely, and, and sticking with that hydration theme, in colder races, what's the kind of minimum amount of bottles you would have for an hour, and can you contrast that with like how many you might have in a really, really hot race? Yeah, so we have like a heat weather protocol. So when it goes above 25 degrees, then we kind of half the carbohydrate intake of the bottle. So then you take double. So in a, yeah, a four hour race, you take eight bottles. And then in a colder race, it would be one per hour um, at least. But yeah, so for the hotter, it is double. So it's quite a lot. Yeah, that is quite a lot to take on, especially if you're not a, a big person. Do you have to train your gut to absorb, you know, fluids and salts and, and carbohydrates like that? Yeah, um, especially like heading towards the season, we do kind of two sessions a week, like building up towards 90 grams. And yeah, all the time we're basically training to intake fluids. Um, yeah, but in races and towards like the bigger goals of the season, then it's something we target more in training as well as the races. And do you tend to train on the same nutrition products and drinks and things that you race on or do you mix it up a bit more in training? Um, yeah, I use, well, I tend to train with the same things just to kind of get the gut used to it and not have any surprises in the race. I'm going to give you a scenario. I want to know how you'd react in this scenario. You're yeah. in a race, you're in a breakaway. Yeah. A few other riders around you. It's probably quite a hot day. And one of the other competitors sort of comes by and says, Pfeiffer, I'm really, really struggling. I've, I can't get back to the, my team car to get a bottle. I dropped a bottle. Can you help me out? What do you do? This was actually me at the tour um, <laughs> on one of the days, I think, yeah, maybe stage four or five when the cars had kind of got the road and our job was done and I was out of water and um, Lizzie Dignan gave me her bottle. So that really saved my life that day, actually. So, yeah, if I have enough, I'd always try and help someone out. So it's kind of like, a you know, do it, be nice because it might one day come yeah, back around exactly. to you yeah um is there kind of like a going is there like a going price in the peloton for a, a bottle or is it just kindness uh sometimes someone says oh you owe me for that um but yeah usually just kindness <laughs> we got some questions from people who read our newsletter and russell peterson wanted to know where does your motivation for racing come from uh i think wanting to win and wanting to be the best just competitive instinct yeah, competitive nature, I think. Yeah. Yeah. and was that something has that always been the way were you like that when you were young yeah I've always like played sports and I started cycling when I was four um, got into it through my dad um, so I think I've always just liked competing and 
yeah, just wanting to be the best that I can be. So we had a question from a guy in California, Cliff. He wanted to know, and I think this is coming from the fact this happens to him from time to time. How do you um, not blow up during training rides with your mates? Um, eat before you get hungry, because usually when you start, your stomach starts rumbling and you're hungry, then it's usually too late. Um, so yeah, for me, I start eating from 45 minutes into a ride and then, yeah, like depending on the efforts, like every half an hour, um, if it's a hard day. Yeah, so eat early, yeah. be consistent. Yeah. yeah. Max Serda wanted to know, during the season, you probably, we imagine that you probably eat a fairly controlled diet and you, you, you eat healthily. If you ever sort of fall off that, do you ever fall off it during the season? If so, what do you go for? Yeah, I wouldn't say fall off because I think I'm quite a balanced person. Like I don't restrict anything, even throughout the season. If I want something that's seen as bad, then I'll still have it. Um, and then I don't necessarily binge towards the end, but I do love like a curry or a pizza every now and then. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. I think everyone on the team has said that they love a pizza. Yeah. So there's a, there's a definite theme yeah. developing. <laughs> That's, yeah, a lot of the, uh, my teammates would devour a pizza. Pfeiffer, thanks so much for chatting with us. Really interesting. And uh, good luck with those upcoming classics. We hope to see you do well. Thank you very much.